Hey everybody, Mark from Advanced Electronic. Anyway, just want to show everybody I recreated uh, the partnered coils that uh, everybody's been uh, working with online. And um, these two coils are just two uh, ferrite rods, maybe about three inches long, quarter inch wide or so. The um, what's what's happening here is I have a function generator it's uh, running at 148.6 kilohertz it's uh, actually a I believe it's a 10 volt input let's see where we're at actually it's 20 volts input now just to run the coils it's running at 10.54 milliamps all right that's the only thing running into it here's the wiring here it's split goes into my uh, ammeter and What's the funny part about this is that let me get the meter closer so you guys can see it runs at 10 and a half milliamps when we put the LED on it drops down to 8.9 milliamps so I'm under the assumption that the load drops um, something pretty cool is happening here shouldn't drop it should go up it's on still on when I take it off it goes up and that's what everybody's talking about with over unity these are pretty tricky coils to get tuned by the way what I did on the outside of here um, they're 280 turn windings over the cores and on the uh the outside over here i have a 60 turn i believe i have number it's a 34 gauge wire on there um it was very difficult for me to tune because i use the same size for the primary and the secondary um secondary is just these uh the ferrites are wound the opposite way they're this is counterclockwise on this side this is coming back this way uh, it's also actually it's clockwise here but they come together in the same area and the two leads are right here tied together in the middle you can hardly see them they're so small but um, the outer leads I'm coming out we're running into one side over here of the LED the other side is coming out the end of the coil and that's going in right here where this uh, alligator clip is connected but as soon as I, uh, you know, 10 point, 10 and a half milliamps, as soon as I put that on. Now the LED is probably somewhere around a quarter of the way lit. Um, that's the max I get out of my function generator. But uh, if we build these on a larger level, you're obviously going to use some sort of amperage to, uh, you know, uh, some sort of uh, wattage to fire a coil on any transformer. And that's basically what you have in your home with all the wall wart power supplies plugged in. So... Uh, why not use something like this? We plug this stuff in, uh, everything's going to go down instead of going up. I think that's pretty cool when you get energy out of it, you know, uh, free use of energy out of this coil. Now, that's what everybody's, uh, you know, a lot of people are denying online. Oh, over unity is impossible. Well, you have to use energy to get it, number one. Um, it's not a closed circuit because it's being pulsed. That's how we're able to get this energy. It's drawing it in from somewhere. Uh, where? I don't know. All I know is that it does work. Um, I'd like to also congratulate Tin Man. Uh, he's done, uh, he had a, a motor and generator combo that he put together, and it's got a partner coil. And what he does is uh, he's putting a light bulb into it, and he shows his amperage when he plugs his power supply into the, uh, the motor to run the motor on itself. It's like 2.8 amps. And uh, he puts a little light bulb on there, and the light bulb... As soon as he switches the generator on, it, the input amperage drops to like 0.78 amps, and the output goes it boosts up to 2.7 or 2.8 amps. So it reverses, and that's what counts. The input is what you're paying for. So um, I did test the output on this. The output is much. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. It's it's not a lot lower, 
but it is lower than what this drops to. So if we took the 10.5 and, you know, we, we uh, what is that, 1.3 milliamps. So this thing's running at 1.3, uh, minus 1.3 milliamps is according to the power supply. Uh, if we turn around and we swap these leads out, we end up the LED is running at 0.33 milliamps. So it's using energy on the output side. On the input side, it's taking the energy away once we plug it in. So if anybody has any questions on this, I can post a, uh, a schematic for this, but I'm going to put the link up in the description or uh, you know, I'll put it in one of my comments. But I just picked this. Uh, this circuit came off of uh, images on Google. I punched in uh, partner partnered coil images and schematics, and I ended up seeing one. It showed two coils at 160 turns, or 180 turns, and uh, the primary coil is 60. Like I said, on the outside of the left-hand coil, I, I just rolled up a piece of paper four or five times, taped it on there with scotch tape, and then I wound 60 turns of the wire on there, and it did not work at first. I played around with it, played around with it, uh, slid the the um, uh, the paper back and forth. Still didn't work. Uh, tried different configurations, and what I did was I I powered the LED up from the center lead first. It was almost like the ferrite cores had to their magnetism had to be like burned into it or something. It, it was like it had to be synchronized. So it still didn't work. I took a magnet, stuck a magnet between the two. Didn't work. Put it on the left, didn't work. Put it on the right, didn't work. And then all of a sudden, the LED popped on while I was moving the coil. I changed the frequency around. I got to approximately 148.6 kilohertz. But everybody's going to be different. You know, um, here's basically what we're getting on the scope, too. I'll give you a scope shot. When I plug this scope, or I put the scope onto the LED, I'm getting... Uh, it's actually drawing more amperage when I put the ground on here. It brings it back up to the amperage uh, milliamps, uh, 10.61 milliamps. But we're getting 250, 252 volts peak to peak, and 4 volts is my average RMS. Uh, that's what the waveform looks like. I have it set on a triangle wave because it uses the least amount of current here. But um, the sine wave actually works pretty good. It brings it up a little bit. Let me try that. We'll do this real quick. And the bulbs work. The LED is working on every uh, on every setting. We're using 15.2 milliamps with a sine wave. When I take the LED off, it's 14.36 milliamps. And when I put it on, it goes to 15.2. But if I take the ground off the scope. It's at 14.39. I take the LED off and it goes up. So the ground from the scope is what's uh, screwing this up. I bet you if I put a ground somewhere in the circuit, I can get more out of it. I haven't tried that yet. Um, I haven't tried to put a ground at the center tap or any of that yet. Or one side of the primary coil, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I, I believe my function generator has a ground on one side. I'm not sure if it's grounded to the outlet, but I'm going to try driving a ground. But here we go again. Here's 15.07 uh, is what it takes to run the system without the light on there. I add the light to it, and it drops down. So we have uh, this is running... at about negative 70.70 uh, milliamps is uh, the draw on the LED. So um, it, it is, uh, uh, I would anticipate calling that uh, over unity. I'm not sure what you would call it at this point. People seem to get aggravated, angry at me and give me a lot of thumbs down when I say over unity. So it's, um, it's pulling in energy additional somewhere somehow uh, to the circuit um, I don't know what it's doing I really can't tell but uh, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have somebody uh, research this a little bit deeper maybe I, I'd bring this into uh, one of the local universities here I have a, uh, uh, a connection at Yale University and I'd like to to see what they say this is doing it's um, 
it's definitely not conventional and if we build this on a larger scale i know we can save energy it's just it's not a matter of uh can we do it? it's a matter of when we do it that's all um, we can build these i wrap transformers all the time i'm going to build them on a large scale and um you know see what the draw is just to drive the coil on there and if it's not that bad then uh we might as well start using them everybody in the world should be using these circuits just to save their energy there's no reason why we should pay as much money as we're paying for electricity it's absolutely ridiculous when this stuff is true it's uh it's been around this has been around for a long time and, and science has been refusing it to to accept the fact that the energy or the electrical types that we're working with uh, cold electricity when you add resistance a higher resistance gives you more power it's it's a proven fact i i have uh a hairpin circuit here when i put a, a 100 watt bulb on it hardly even lights um throw a 20 watt bulb on there and the thing is as bright as can be you can't look at it and it's so hot you can't touch it so that's the indication of of power being driven through a circuit electricity doesn't work like that conventional electricity does not drive a higher resistance it drives a lower resistance with more power um so somebody's got to explain that to me uh high frequency circuits don't change the way ohm's law works period doesn't happen so uh anybody want to uh challenge me with the wisdom on that one um please give me an insight of why resistance higher resistance to give you more power in any circuit and i don't want to hear anything about frequency frequency has nothing to do with it we could put an ac circuit high high frequency ac circuit and put a resistor on there it doesn't work that way it, it's just uh um the laws of physics don't allow that to happen so thanks for watching come again